Hey and welcome back. There's a piece of technology that I think everybody watching this film has definitely used and most of us own that is in our house. We've never seen it and possibly it's extraterrestrial. Well, that's an interesting statement, Simon, and it's obviously complete bollocks. <laughs> but is it? Today, we look at the quantum leap into the world of the Cavity Magnetron. Hey, and welcome back. Uh, I made this on my drill press. It's a lump of um, aluminum. And in the United Kingdom, it's a lump of aluminium. <laughs> And it's uh, about an inch thick. It's uh, about two inches in diameter. It has a hole in the center surrounded by a number of other small holes. And it's a metamaterial. It um, changed the course of World War II. If we didn't have the cavity magnetron, um, Britain would have lost World War II. An amazingly strong political decision was chosen to share it with the United States to encourage them to help us Brits win World War II. But the interesting thing about this piece of meta material is where did it come from? Well, um, so, so the big picture, well, maybe the Wikipedia picture. If you look at Wikipedia and look up the cavity magnetron, it, and you could do this as well, it basically says it was a quantum leap in technology. It changed radar systems by increasing its power by over a factor of a hundred overnight. Well, nothing in the science world, excuse my papers, appears overnight. Uh, it obviously didn't. There's obviously a precursor. Um, bad cavity magnetrons. <laughs> no, or bad ones like I made. Um, that didn't quite work. But the concept was being explored of a kind of a... The thing with a cavity magnetron is there's no moving parts. It's just a lump of metal. It could be copper, it could be steel, it could be aluminium, it could even be aluminum. <laughs> and... It works by its shape. Now, nobody had ever, in my humble opinion of research, thought about that. So, could it be possible that us from the future, aliens from the planet Zog, wanted to influence humanity's history by, uh, by giving us by giving us a piece of extraterrestrial future technology that changed the course of history? Uh, probably not. And that's what I love about social media science. You probably know where it came from. You probably worked with people who built the failed cavity resonating magnetrons. But you know what? It's not out there in published history. We know two wonderful Brits in a shed in Birmingham built a cavity magnetron. And if you look again at Wikipedia, it says, it says that when they first built theirs, it was 10 times more powerful than the existing radar system. And by the end of the week, it was 100. By the end of the month, it was 2,500 times more powerful than the radar that Brits and the Americans had been working on for a year. Well, how did that happen? <laughs> Please tell me, because... It's, 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 I've been wanting to make this film for you for ages because it's a piece of technology which is so wonderful, so important. Um, it, it's more powerful and it's incredibly small. It can be miniaturized and put into aircraft. It can even be miniaturized and put into shells. The radar controlled artillery 
and night fighting with radar really won World War II. Plus, of course, chain home and as a defensive measure. But let's look at what came before this piece of alien tin whatever technology, the cavity magnetron. So here we go, Simon's Potted History of Radar. So uh, it was invented by Robert Watson Watt. It, no, it wasn't, it wasn't. It was invented in the Ukraine, probably 50 years before Watson Watt had been born. And the technology of RF signals reflecting off an aircraft or a ship or a human or whatever was known. And in fact, long before Robert Watson Watt got involved, and you know, he is a hero, <laughs> The BBC knew about it because when planes flew through their Daventry transmitter, it made the radio uh, signal, the music listened by Mrs. H's radio wobble. And the post office, the GPO who are in charge of, of radio transmission looked at it and said, yeah, it's something to do with the, your signal bouncing off these newfangled aircraft kind of things and they wrote a report called the wobble report and that's what robert watson watt actually looked at so in watson watt's classic experiment the daventry experiment why is it called daventry simon because it was it took place right next to the bbc's daventry transmitter the bbc transmitted a special test signal that's my thousand hertz tone and the War Office agreed that a metallic aircraft would fly through the beam while Robert Watson Watt was in a caravan with two wooden poles and some chicken wire and an oscilloscope. And that's his clever bit. And when the aircraft flew through the BBC's, it went boink. And as the aircraft moved, the boink moved. So... He hadn't built a radar. He saw the effect on the reflection caused by the BBC's wobble. And that did lead to the idea of something called radio direction finding. And so they needed to build a transmitter that could send out RF, radio frequency, to see incoming German planes over the North Sea. And it was really hard because they were working with, I don't have one here, let's pretend. They were working with vacuum tubes, evacuated class bottles, tubes. The technology of the day, the electronics of the day. They were large, power-hungry bits of fragile kit. And as they wanted them to be stronger, they made them bigger. They increased the voltage. Some of them exploded. <laughs> and that I call steam engine technology. It has a history. You know where you're going with it. You can make it bigger, put more power in it, make the bottle bigger, have more anodes and cathodes, and you can make more RF energy. And then really clever story. Um, is that they came up with the ultimate RF radar device called a Kylostron. And a Kylostron's really clever. It uses the principle of amplification by bouncing. So it's a large evacuated tube, like a vacuum tube, and it sends and amplifies the radar RF frequency wave through it, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it comes out the end. But that was an enormous problem coming out the end because the tube had to be a vacuum, but it had to pass through something that would let radio frequency through, but not let the air in. And um, a very secret piece of ceramic material was made possibly um, by Bell Laboratories. And um, it was perfect, but they had an enormous problem because they couldn't stick the ceramic material on the end of the Kylostron vacuum tube and make a vacuum seal and let the RF frequency out. So in fact, the history of radar is the history of glue <laughs> and the way that they bonded ceramic to metal was world changing. But you see where I'm going with this. It has a history from a tiny vacuum tube to a bigger one, put more power in it, make it larger, 
eventually use your smarts to build a really big amplification one. And they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Ground-based radar was the thing. There was no way in a million years that the radar would ever fit in an aircraft. It was now the size of this room or bigger and ate so much power. And then two guys in the shed in Birmingham built a cavity magnetron overnight their first model the very first model that they released was 10 times 10 a factor of 10 more powerful than the most powerful chylostron and it was the size of a deck of cards and as i said in wikipedia by the end of the week, they'd made it 100 times more powerful. By the end of the month, they'd made it 2.5 thousand times more powerful. Winston Churchill knew about it. The Tizard Committee decided to use it as leverage. Look what we've got. To the Americans, who were not keen to get involved in fighting in Europe, gave them the cavity magnetron. They went, where did you get that? And that's my question. <laughs> Where did you get that idea of a meta material with holes made on a drill press that works a hundred or a thousand or two and a half thousand times better than our amazing radar systems? And it's tiny, has no moving parts, it hardly gets warm. And it's a mystery to me not to you and that's the point of this channel um do we have secret alien technology in our microwave ovens or is it a prosaic timeline back to an early cavity resonating system that i just don't know about maybe i don't know about it because it was kept secret or maybe it came from the planet Zog, <laughs> or our future. Answers in the comments below, please, wonderful viewers. And thanks for watching this channel. If these kind of questions are things that you like, please subscribe for more and press like. It really helps my channel grow. Thank you very much. Because of you, the truth is out there.